First of all, I want to say thank you to Dr. Joseph Jordan because he has been suffering what means to bring a Cuban here to the U.S. <laughs> and thank you, Dr. You know, the first material that you saw, the rose of my heart, the rise of my corazón, is uh, the only experience that I have in fiction. I basically made more documentary. And it was uh, a project that I made in June in 1999, finishing in 2001. That it was the last time that I was here in the state. The second project is the first chapter of the whole project that the name is 1912, Breaking the Silence, Voice, Voices, para un silencio. And this is the first chapter that presents why uh, it was necessary to, uh, for the black people in that moment uh, to make the party. And the second and the third chapter, I am still working. The majority of the material um, I have now, is, it was shooting, but uh, I am still working with the um, post-production. And I started well, in 2003, and it was really an idea of Aline Heger, who wrote the book about the Independent Party, of course. But um, I wasn't sure that I wanted to make a documentary at that time, because I had been doing Bruce of My Heart, and I thought that I didn't want to work anymore about the Independent Party, of course. But really, I realized later that it was necessary to do more about it because few people in Cuba know about the Independent Party of Color. It's something that they don't know very well. It's something that is part of uh, this kind of the, the chapter in the Cuban history, that there are a lot of science. So I decided to do my contribution. And of course, I don't pretend to, do, uh, to say everything, because there are many things that it will be impossible to, to talk about because we don't have images, because uh, many people die, and uh, there is not a lot of information. So, because this is a dialogue, I don't pretend to talk alone here forever. So, speak slowly, and I try to do my best. See? Okay. Gracias, Gloria. Thank you very much, Gloria, for this amazing, this amazing work. Uh, I have so many questions for you, but first of all, thank you for bringing me. Do we have one on Thursday? Yeah, okay. Thursday, I, 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 I will go to another place. I know that. First of all, thank you for bringing Sara Gomez uh, uh, as uh, one of the first lines in the first uh, documentary because uh, we have been really translating her work. Uh, then, I, I have just two questions, just to start a conversation. Tell us a little bit about working in archives or in archi archival work in Cuba, because many of us are uh, we deal uh, uh, with with, uh, uh, with archival work in, 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 in countries in the Caribbean or in Latin America. We know uh, that it's a really hard work to do, a very difficult work to do, and more when you are exploring these issues that are a little like a blur. In, in, the well, the, the majority of the images and the newspapers and the news, uh, I got it in the Cuban archive between newspaper, old newspaper, and documents, because it's the base. I didn't want to create any kind of fiction around it, so I was allowed to show directly with the originals. You know that, unfortunately, in Cuba, because of the lack of resources, in many of the newspapers and documents, you have to work directly with the original. So that means that I was allowed to shoot a newspaper that even was in, not in very good condition, and including the, the few, few samples of the newspaper of the Independent Party of Color that is not easy to find in Cuba. So uh, it was basically, you know, the interview and the original materials. I work at the National Library, the National Archive, uh, El Instituto de Literatura y Lingüística, and now for the second chapter, I, I did some shooting in Santiago de Cuba, of course. 
in the, in the library and also in the archivo de Santiago de Cuba. No sé si eso. Yeah, that, that's, that's part of the question. Ah, the second part. Yeah, because it's really interesting as a filmmaker, of course you are a documentary a filmmaker, because you work with, with archival material and you are trying to bring these archives to life. Uh, not only as a, as a, as a physical material uh, that you are trying to bring more things into it when you bring this music, when you are creating uh, like a narrative and poetry behind it, when you are connecting not only historical facts but also what could have happened, you know, in terms of, of this, of this uh, dimension of the Orishas and things that are part of, of, of the Afro-Cuban uh, experience. Uh, back into play when you are doing a film. It will be really different when you are reading a book like Una Nación para Todos, A Nation for All by Alejandro. Uh, when you are reading the, the documents and the part of the documents, but when you are, you, you are dealing with images, the archival material, then in a, in a film, and then with sounds, and then with, with your ideas as a, as, a, as, a, as a filmmaker behind that. It's, that's what I really, uh, interested in, 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 in the two films. Uh, sí, well, the music always has been a, another character in my films. It's part of the spirituality that I try to bring to the films. It's part of the identity that I try to put together. Also, uh, I belong to a film school of a kind. I never studied cinema. I, I, am, I belong to the generation that uh, study at the university, different career, but I start working directly in the film production as an assistant director uh, in the research, and that was my school. I never, I never went to a film school because we didn't have that time at that time. So music, and also I am a musician. So music for me is important. It's another character. So even if I deal with the history, is is the base, is the spirit that is very important to accompany, but not just to accompany the images, is that I need that the people get in touch with the whole atmosphere of the period. And Cuban music, you know, that is very rich. So we have these old materials, like of this kind of dance song of, at the beginning of the 20th century, La Trova Tradicional. Uh, so this is the kind of song that, you know, that accompany these people. El himno nacional is in the film. The national hymn is in the film, but played only by the guitar and accompany the, his, the heroes like Antonio Maceo, like Quintín Bandera. So with the only playing the guitar, you know, the whole orchestra are trying to give a sentimental dimension in order to understand why the people uh, decided to organize the Independent Party of Color. Because if I start directly, when I start directly talking about the massacre, what they say, when I say, one moment, go back and try to, to see the history in another way. Because uh, I, I don't think that I am saying anything new, everything was there. It's just to remark the contribution and the participation of the black people in the Cuban history. Because it's true that the, when I interviewed the young lady that said, uh, I had the discussion between the people in, in uh, Escuela de Psicología, and they know, well, ¿qué han hecho los negros en Cuba? This thing's happen. This thing's happen now, right now. So I said, okay, we need to, we need to start. So I will talk to the independent little by little. Let's go to start in, in another way. So I am in the process to taste this film in Cuba. I made a premiere in 19 um, of March. Um, I hope that this coming Wednesday, uh, no, Friday, they will show in the Cuban TV. And uh, for me, it's important to see the reaction. It's the first time that I use um, in my film um, hip hop, a rap. Uh, and it was a, a, a rap that was made with you know, raperos in Cuba, dedicated to independent party of color. Uh, and uh, it, I think that also it was important for young people, you know, to get in touch with all this atmosphere. I don't want to sound old. 
I want to see, because there are many ways. I am getting old, no? Too much. <laughs> um, normally, documentaries are very conservative and very boring. A lot of information, a lot of interview, long interview. I prefer that you get some doubts and not to give you everything. Try to find the things that I couldn't show here and I can present here. You, you could, you, I need that you feel the, the motivation to get more, you know? So um, it's a style that is this kind of combination of spiritual things and memory, like the old lady that said, Quintín Banderas, General de las Tres Guerras. Bueno, she didn't say more, but it's not necessary. In my opinion, I think that it's important that a woman like her feel the, the memory of this kind of people. Quintín Banderas, general of three wars. When, what happened to Quintín? So it's little pieces of the history. It's an approach. And I know that here there are important specialists in the Cuban history and I want to hear their voices also. Por favor, Profesor Lupe. Bienvenido y gracias por estar aquí. Otra opinión o crítica? Yo no me pongo brava. I don't get angry for the critics. No. There is a, a few information, but I, I, am, I am still trying to research much more the voices um, of the, and the participation of, of the women. I think that they play an important role after the massacre in the process of in the indemnization of the people who were in jail. That's for the moment what I say, but I, it was important that uh, to present that they were part of the movement for that reason. The end, at the end, after the credit, this test was written by somebody who wrote in the newspaper that was called Previsión. Previsión was the newspaper of the Partido Independiente de Color in Havana. And they wrote, I found that they wrote the, in the newspaper. But the, it's true that the first film, Rose of My Heart, is more um, the family, the family history. Because when I started to, uh, doing some research about this topic about the Independent Party of Color and the massacre, one of the things that surprised me more was how they break fami black families and people who disappeared or they didn't know uh, so what happened. So this is something that is only in the past. Any of us could have this history in their family, and even we didn't know, because people keep in silent, history keep in silent. And one of the things that I will try in the next chapters is uh, why the silence? Why this kind of silence? What is the meaning of this silence? Was it a silent? Who invented the silence? Black people so keep in silent? Why? So this is something that little by little will come in the next chapters.
not my generation, like the generation of Nancy Morejo, eh, Rogelio Martinez Fure, and many others that were, you know, blacks, and um, when the revolution arrived, was, uh, they were around 20 or something. They have this kind of pattern, but we didn't study very much about this. So it was little by little that, and trying to put together different pieces that we start to a dialogue about about these things. Sometimes not too much comprehension, but I think that now it's more open. And uh, when I start in 2003, almost it, it was quasi almost impossible <laughs> to talk about the independent party. Of course, it's true that Aline Hegel published the book in, in the Spanish version in Cuba, and but it's something that never passed to the education. And this is uh, the main concern that we have, that we have many people that they have been doing many research, they published, but didn't pass to the education. So that means that young generation, they didn't know much more. So I think that, I feel more comfortable now, but uh, it's, I started a long time, since I made my film of womb, and my first test in Baragua, that is another, a chapter of the, this history, the presence of the people of the Caribbean to Cuba. So um, I feel more comfortable and happy that it's uh, more accepted, uh, more tolerated. And also I live in Havana. I cannot talk for the whole island. I don't know how these things is managed in Pinar del Rio or Santa Clara, but I think that it's not the same. I think that it's not the same. So, since the moment that they put the themes in the famous round table in Cuba, it's possible that we could make more discussion about the past and also about the present. I have a question here. Uh -huh. Still a question. Oh. Well, actually, I think um, you answered my question, and it was whether or not this event is included in the textbooks in Cuba, and I think you answered that. Thank you. And, um, and I think also you, you did ask the question about, um, about passing on, families passing on the information about what happened and about what, what had happened. The fact that the victors write the history yeah. Okay. And the losers want to forget. Mm -hmm. See. So perhaps um, that is part of you want to sort of bury. Yeah. Yeah. See, I think that I will develop this topic much more in another chapter. But uh, it's, it's one of the motivation uh, of this project because in, in the black families, they didn't talk. They from, I, actually, the majority doesn't know. So uh, I never hear about this in, in Havana, in, inside my family. Uh, recently, I went to Santiago de Cuba, where um, the majority of these issues happened when they made a protest in 1912, and the same happened. The same happened. You don't, you don't see many things. But I think that with the research that I am doing, I can explain historically for what reason this happened. Between the official history, it could be clear. And it, could, it would be clear for what reason happened between the black families also. Thank you for your film. Cubana. 
and this is something that he brought when he knew about the issues. And he didn't talk directly about the independence, but he brought in that moment, he brought the song, La Clavia Maceo. So uh, it was something that, that I found. Um, it was nobody played this song. And so we uh, made a re recorded, especially for the film, with a small group of girls. Because according to Fernando Martinez Heredia, who talked about this song, he said, I remember when I was a child that at school we used to play that song. So, pobre Cuba, señor, pobre Cuba. See, and so it was made especially for the film. Also, was made as a record especially for the film, the La Musica Campesina, that is at the end. Because in reading the newspaper of the Independent Party of Color, I found the text written in 1910, and when I read it, it sounds to me como la guajira, la música de, de countryside music in Cuba. So I went to Emiliano Sardinia, that is one of the important people who play this music, who is a singer, and I said, yes, you are right, we could make it. So he made the arrangement and we, we use it for the film. Thank you. 